For this demo, we'll be implementing a linear gauge. I'm starting with similar markup that we used in the previous demos. I have my Kendo content and scripts referenced in the head along with a custom CSS that contains minimal styling for the non-Kendo elements. I have a div that is the top level container. Inside the container, there's an H2 stating what the gauge represents. This is needed because gauges do not have a title object. And then I have my div that will eventually be configured as my gauge. After that's the script block, and there we have our document ready function, where I'm declaring a single car spec. Now this is different than all the previous demos where we've been dealing with a collection of car specs. Gauges are for presenting a single point of data, and that's why we're dealing with a single spec. To start, I'll create the basic initialization by selecting my gauge and applying the Kendo linear gauge function to it. At this point, I can save and pull this up in the browser. And you'll see that I get a basic linear gauge. Now let's add our data and some customization to it. The first thing I need to do is configure the pointer, which represents the data point. Not sure why they decided to change up verbiage on the gauge widgets. I think series, like is used with the charts, would still make sense here, but I'm sure they had a good reason to change things up. So I configure the pointer by setting the value to car spec dot base price. And I'm also setting the color because by default, using the default theme, everything is black. At this point, we could pull this up in the browser, but I'm not going to. The reason being is that by default, no matter what your range is, the gauge always starts at zero and has a major unit of 10 and a minor unit of one. So if I tried to pull this up in the browser, it would chug for a good amount of time while it renders 20,200 major units and 202,000 minor units. When it does render, it displays a solid black line as a scale because the ticks are so close together. So just a little recommendation, if you're dealing with a large scale, make sure you configure the scale, the min and the max, before trying to render. So with that in mind, I'm going to configure the scale before pulling this up in the browser. In the scale, I'm setting the min and max values as well as the major and minor unit. The major, major unit is the larger ticks that have corresponding labels, and the minor units are the smaller ticks that do not have labels. By default, the linear gauge displays vertically, and for this demo, I wanted to display it horizontally. And I do that by setting vertical to false. And finally, like in the previous demo, my scale represents currency. I set the label format to display as currency. Now I can save this and pull it up in the browser and confirm that we have our linear gauge. We have the scale displayed with the units we defined as well as correctly formatted labels. And our car spec base price is represented across the top of the scale. One other thing I can do with gauges that's very useful is display ranges to help me figure out where my value far falls in a particular scenario. For example, let's say I was lucky enough to have the funds and wife approval to actually purchase one of these dream cars. But as any good wife will do, mine's given me a strict budget. In this case, my budget is a whopping $195,000 but I figure I could get up to 199K and still be okay. And I could probably get away with 201,000. It might cost me a night on the couch, but might be worth it. But once I go over 201,000, I'm really looking at the danger zone. So let's set up some ranges that will allow me to look at the scale and know exactly where I fall in the wife approval factor. Ranges are configured as part of the scale property. So here I'm defining three ranges, one for each range. I'm configuring where the range should start by setting the from property. I'm configuring where the range should end by setting the to property. And I'm setting the color of the range. So my first range is 195,000 to 199,000, where I feel I can get by with nothing more than maybe an eye roll from the wife. So this is green, this is good to go. The second range is 199,000 to 201,000. Where it's going to be risky, I may get a night or two on the couch, so this is yellow. The third range is 201,000 to 210,000. Where if I'm getting into this, I'm in the serious danger zone. So this will be displayed red and should be avoided at all costs. So I can save this, go back to my browser, refresh, 
and you'll see that I have my ranges defined on my scale as well as my original gauge and it looks like the Gallardo is not an option even in my fictional scenario. Uh, let's move on to take a look at implementing a radial gauge. For this demo, we'll be implementing a radial gauge. I'm starting with the same markup that we started with in the linear gauge demo. And just because it's so fitting for this type of display, I'm going to graph the top speed. To start, I'll create the basic initialization by selecting my gauge element and applying the Kendall radial gauge function to it. At this point, I can save this and pull it up in the browser. And you'll see that I get a basic radial gauge. Now let's add our data and customize it. The first thing I need to do is configure the pointer. I'm setting the value of the pointer to the top speed of my car and again configuring the pointer to be blue instead of black. Next I need to configure my scale. So in the scale, I'm setting the min and max values, as well as the major and minor unit. Now I can save this, go back to my browser and refresh. And you'll see that we have a radial gauge with the scale having the correct min and max values. And our car's top speed is being represented on our scale. So the Lamborghini Gallardo has a top speed of 192. So you can see that's where our needle is pointing. Now let's add some ranges. I've defined three ranges. My first range is 100 to 140 miles per hour, which is a typical car as far as top speed goes. I'm flopping the colors here and making the first range red. As if I'm purchasing a supercar, I'm expect expecting it to certainly top out far north of 140 miles an hour. The second range is 140 to 170 miles per hour, which is fast, but still fairly low for a supercar. So we'll make this yellow. And the final range is 170 to 220 miles per hour, which is insanely fast, and only the top supercars can reach those speeds. This is our green range. So I can save this, go back up to my browser and refresh. And you'll see that I have my radial gauge with three ranges defined. The Gallardo falls right in the middle of the green range at 192 miles an hour.